Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Let's Plant Recap. This is the show where I look at the comments from the past week and share my thoughts about it and occasionally show you new plants. If you've been following my Facebook page then you would have already seen these plants as I posted this earlier this week. I got these at the Ascot Vale Garden Center and they had this for half off. And no, I was not paid to do this plug, although I did mention to Pino that I'll help spread the word about it. This Ascot Vale Garden Center is doing a clearance sale of sorts because they're planning to move to another location early next year and they are trying to get rid of their existing stock. So if you somehow found yourself here in Melbourne, then I would highly recommend visiting their shop because they do have a nice selection and at half the price, you can't go wrong. So I present to you the plants that I got and let's start from the back. This is an Aeonium Emerald Carpet. You know me as a big Echeveria collector but I also do collect Aeoniums. In fact, my most favorite plant, if you've seen that video, is an Aeonium. I did see a mass planting of the Emerald Carpet back in Roraima Nursery and I asked Lyle about it, asking if he, he was selling some cuttings of it. But at that time, unfortunately, they did not have any for sale and because of that, I forgot about it. And imagine my surprise seeing it in Dino's selection. Win-win. This next one here is a cluster of Echeveria Briar Rose. I'm pretty sure this is not crested, although there's lots of rosettes in here. And that is good because I don't really like crests. It was tagged at $25 but at half off, I only got it for $12. And if you consider the number of rosettes that you would see here, then it works out to about less than $2 per head. Now moving on to the front, this small one at the right was tagged as Agavoides Mountain Range. But I can't find it in my usual references, so I'm going to, so I'm going to be a bit skeptical about the name for now. Upon visual inspection, my first thought is that it looks a lot like the Echeveria Martin, so maybe it might be related to that. This curly one in the middle is an Echeveria Shabayana, and I got it as a replacement for my Shabayana. I used to have another specimen before, but from memory, it had to endure sunburns, uh, fungus, mini bugs, that works, so unlucky plant. <laughs> Hopefully, this specimen will fare a lot better than the previous one. And finally, this tiny rosette here is labeled Echeveria clara. Many websites list it as a variety or a form of secunda, but I'm not so sure that's correct. But we'll see. Once it grows flowers, then that would help confirm that it is a secunda, because the flowers tells you a lot about the species. I think we're about ready to have a look at the comments, and we're going to do that indoors. Time to look at the comments and let's start by looking at the previous recap for episode 76 from Patty Bugenmos. Your sincerity and dedication to doing this is amazing. I was going to ask how well your knees and back do after all of that. I'm glad to hear you are not in much pain and still able to carry on. I would truly have to use the two-ton front end loader to lay in while I reach for the back areas with bad knees. I am serious. As a rancher, you use your big tools to save your knees and back. It may be a used boom truck to fix windows or a four-wheeler to go down the chicken house with a 50-pound bag in front. When your lower back hurts, I can tell you how to fix that since I've been doing it for 40 years for my husband. Keep up the exceptional work. Thank you so much, Patty, for your concern about my well-being. My wife has to constantly remind me about this as well. You know, take care of your back, especially since we have little kids, we have a baby, we have a toddler, so for their sake, I should stay healthy. For one, at least gardening keeps me active, but on the other hand, if I am not too careful, then I'm liable to get an injury, you know, so yeah, noted. From Natalia Voskresenska, extra props to you for pronouncing my name right first time. That doesn't happen too often. Well, I'm not sure if I'm saying Natalia or Natalia. You know, I'm not sure where to accent or put the stress in, but I'm really confident about Voskresenska. <laughs> From Isa Zidlowska, Chuck. Only you would think of this stuff when picking out a name for your kid. <laughs> Nerd alert! 
So we've got three videos since the last recap and we're going to go through all of them. This time we look at episode 77. This is about reusing cuttings in your landscape. From Isa Zidlowska. Hi Chuck. Man, how are you gonna get your family through this harsh winter? Weather sure looks brutal. Sorry, I can't help myself. Those agavoides look permanently windswept, all pointing uniformly in one direction. Well, Isa, you know why I don't find much time to work on my videos in winter? It's not because of the shorter daylight hours, but it's more of I'm shoveling all of the snow away from the set. That is why you never see snow in my garden. I spend a lot of time removing the snow. Kidding. Yeah, those agavoides, they really need a relocation or at least reorientation because they're reaching for the sun. That's actually etiolation. From Angela Ho. I think it's my first time seeing you comment here. So welcome to Serious Capades. So she writes, Stunning. Beautiful landscaping. Thank you from Sydney. Thank you so much. From the Dumbrose one, another great video, Chuck. The colors and design are so beautiful. Great work. Thank you so much, Bernadette, and I'm glad you like it. From Samantha Theory, I really enjoy your videos and your yard is such an inspiration. Thank you so much. From Kathy Gilbreth, enjoyed another fantastic video with your gorgeous succulents and love the addition of more rocks. Great music and editing also. I'm glad you like it, Kathy, and I'm so happy seeing you comment in each and every video recently. So, so really, thank you so much for your support. From Tomas Monescazon, Chuck, I love the new style. The music, the shots, transition, the plants. Your videos are awesome. Those really were stunning photos at the end. I really need to get out with the camera more often. Thanks for another magnificent episode. Thanks for the compliments, Tom, and I'm so glad you noticed all of those little details. Like I told you in our own chats, I've been thinking hard about my previous videos and identified the elements that I like there and the elements that I would like to see there. And I tried some adjustments in this episode and, you know, it was a risk because there's a little risk involved. I was not sure if the new feel, look and feel would work, but thank you for your feedback. It tells me that I'm doing something right. From Zanizana66. Wow, it looks fabulous. I'm learning so much from your gardening. Succulents are just so immediately pleasing. I'm trying to grow something from bulbs and oh my god, so boring looking at bare dirt. I bet I was sold something dodgy on Gumtree. Live and learn. I would have to agree with you and and I'm also not sure that my tulips worked and I would not know until spring, so ah <laughs> from Alex Late. Ah, I love what you've done. I did up one of my front garden beds and I hope they take over like yours. Give it time, and they will grow. From Given to Grow, I love the flashbacks in this video as well as the music. When it came in around 3 minutes, it had me doing silly little dance moves while drinking my morning coffee. When you trim the blue senecio, all of a sudden you reveal that beautiful succulent. It looks like it's in a bird bath like stand. That was amazing because I didn't even see it behind the chopsticks. Back to enjoying the music at 6.43, haha. I can absolutely see what you were talking about in your last recap video regarding the video quality and editing getting better. It really had. Great job, Chuck. Thank you so much, Denise. About that arrangement behind the chopsticks, it's, uh, it's this huge bowl, about 70 maybe 70, 80 centimeters in diameter, so it's rather large. I moved it out from somewhere in the alcove. It's, the alcove is this separate spot right next to the house, which was not getting enough sunlight. So I used to have a bowl there and I deconstructed it and moved it over out into the open, where hopefully it would be getting a lot more sunlight. And at that time, that mound there, I just stuck lots of cuttings around it. So I didn't really take mine the overall look and feel 
but I just wanted something to tower over them so I stacked uh, large boulders, rocks on top of the bowl just making sure it doesn't break and stuck in some succulents in there unfortunately the bowl being too far back it's not as prominent as it should be so I don't know I might work on it again at some point but not now <laughs> it's hard work again from the knees okay I should have waited until the very end of the video to send my comment because I would have added this you are now making what I would consider the best quality succulent videos on YouTube. I can only imagine your channel will continue to blow up. Wow, that's so intense. And I wish you're right. From Blissful Box, I really enjoyed this video. So much fun to watch. It gets better each time. I'm so glad to think that way. I am constantly trying to improve and your feedback helps me know that I'm doing it right. From Lea G. Just curious as to why you don't have the grass grow right up to the garden edging. The grass that we have growing in our backyard is called Kiku grass and it is very invasive. And if I left them alone, they would they can crawl, they can send their rhizomes under the pavers. The concrete pavers that we have, the edgers, they are not too deep. I think it's just this deep and the kikyu grass can send rhizomes underneath and grow on the other side and it's a pain to remove them so rather than give them the space give them the capacity to grow on the other side i have to cut them right at the source and leave a gap that way it would be much harder for them to cross over and finally we have the comparison video about the elegance and the gloca there's lots of comments here, so I'm going to cherry pick. From Sandy Shirley, Chuck, I may have squirted my Diet Pepsi out of my nose when I saw you demonstrate how they flower. Hilarious. My plan worked. <laughs> I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> From Aneta S, yes, please do this more. You got it. I promise that I would do more of these types of videos. I like doing comparison videos because making comparisons is, I guess, one of my strong suits. And apart from that, I'm thinking of working on this little mini series about how to identify, how to compare, yeah, how to identify succulents based on their characteristics like the leaf shape, the leaf apex, the leaf edge, the flowers. Maybe the rosette shape, colors, I don't know. Yeah, so maybe a series on identification, on how to identify or what to watch out for when identifying. Because it can be quite hard to identify, but you know, if you know what to look for, then at least it helps narrow it down, you know, point you in the right direction. And of course, as you know, I collect echeverias mainly, so. I would be framing the videos in terms of Echeverias, but you can apply the same principles to any other type of plant. Might just look a bit different, but it's pretty much the same. From Anne McIntosh. Very helpful. Don't think I'll forget what second means. That was excellent. Thank you. <laughs> From Kim Taute Tauti. Still don't know how to say your name. Wow, that was interesting. So mine are opposite to what I was told. I was told by an 80 year older collector that most of most of the time the petals and flowers can tell you a lot about the plant's name. Thanks. Yes, he is right. The flowers for the most part will tell you the species of the plant. But but these days, we've got lots of hybrids, hybrids between species, so they would have similar flowers. So they would have similar looking flowers, colors, and that would muddy things a bit. But at least, the very least, it will help you narrow down by the species that was used, that was involved. That's still better than trying across the board, finding which species, hybrid, cultivar, etc. From Blissful Box, 
Wow, learned some new stuff. Thank you, Chuck. Your explanation and demonstration was to the point. <gasps> From Monologue. Oh, thanks. It seems as if I'm late. Oh, ha ha ha. Nice video telling people which is which. Better late than never. Thank you for watching another episode of Recap. Please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on any of my future videos. I release a Let's Plant episode every Tuesday morning my time, Melbourne, and that's about Monday evening on the other side of the world in the US. I also put out recap videos like this one every Saturday night my time, which is Saturday morning on the other side of the world, I think. And apart from those two, if we're lucky with the weather, then I could work on one of my in-between videos, like the comparison video I made just now. As mentioned earlier, I'm hoping to be able to put out a series on identifying how to identify the skills and the things you need to watch out for when, identifies, when identifying and comparing distinguishing succulents. So watch out for that. And if you were not aware of it, please check out my Instagram. I post an Echeveria photo every single day under the hashtag DailyEchevaria. See you in the next video. Bye.